Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video is on neck lumps. Neck lumps are a common presentation in the general population, and have a number of possible causes. As such, comprehensive history and examination is required, before considering appropriate investigations. The first step in the assessment of a patient with a neck lump, is to take a detailed history and perform a comprehensive examination. Key parts of the history include duration of onset, any recent change in size, number of neck lumps. Associated symptoms especially red flag symptoms. Relevant past medical history, such as smoking status, alcohol intake, previous head and neck cancers, and known radiation exposure, such as previous radiotherapy. Key parts of the examination. Any lump in the neck can be metastatic lymphadenopathy secondary to malignancy in the nasopharynx, oropharynx, hypopharynx, and the oral cavity. Therefore, it is essential to examine all of these areas to rule out any sinister causes including the neck, oral cavity, ear, and cranial nerve examination. In the context of a neck lump, the red flag features raise the suspicion of an underlying head and neck malignancy. Hard, painful and fixed lump. Associated otalgia, dysphagia, strider, or hoarse voice. Unilateral nasal symptoms such as epistaxis, discharge, or congestion. Unexplained weight loss, night sweats, or fever or rigors. And cranial nerve palsies. In children, red flag symptoms also include the presence of a supraclavicular mass, lumps larger than 2 cm, and a previous history of malignancy. The possible causes of a neck lump can be due to infective, neoplastic, vascular, or inflammatory cause, as shown in this slide. Neck lumps can also be due to traumatic cause causing hematoma, autoimmune disease like Graves' disease, and congenital causes like cystic hygroma, thyroglossal cyst, bronchial, and dermoid cyst. This picture A shows a lateral neck lump caused by cervical lymphadenopathy. Picture B shows central neck lump caused by thyroid goiter. For investigation of neck lumps. First we have ultrasound, plus minus fine needle aspiration. Ultrasound provides characterization of lymph nodes, salivary glands, vascular structures, and thyroid nodules. Indeed, ultrasound findings alone can be sufficient to make a diagnosis of certain neck lumps. If there are suspicious features on imaging, an ultrasound-guided FNA should be performed. Unless lymphoma is suspected, then a core biopsy or an open excision biopsy is preferable in this case. Next we have CT scan or MRI imaging. CT provides visualization of bony anatomy, whilst MRI provides soft tissue detail and delineation of abnormalities in the oral cavity or oropharynx. Current guidelines advise both CT and MRI also aid in the management of head and neck cancer, including staging disease, detecting metastasis, and radiotherapy planning. Let's look at some of the neck lumps. First, cystic hygroma. A cystic hygroma, also known as a cystic lymphangioma, is a benign fluid-filled sac caused by a malformation of the lymphatic system. They can be found anywhere on the body, but classically presents in the axilla or posterior triangle of the neck. Cystic hygromas are typically noticed and diagnosed before age 2 years, presenting as soft painless fluctuant masses that transilluminate. They can be associated with congenital conditions like Turner's syndrome, and can grow large enough to cause airway obstruction or dysphagia. However, not all cystic hygromas require treatment, and less symptomatic. Treatment options include surgical excision, or lymphatic sclerotherapy, which is the injection of sclerosing agents into the cyst. In some cases, a cystic hygroma is diagnosed antenatally and if it is likely to cause airway compromise at birth, an ex utero intrapartum treatment procedure can be performed. This picture shows a newborn with a cystic hygroma at the neck, and the ultrasound picture of it. Next, carotid body tumors, also known as a carotid paragangliomas, are benign neuroendocrine tumors that arise from the paraganglion cells of the carotid body. The carotid body is made up of a cluster of neuroendocrine cells, whereby sporadic or hereditary mutations lead to the formation of paragangliomas. A carotid body tumor will present as a pulsatile painless neck lump, often with a bruit present on auscultation. Carotid paragangliomas are slow-growing, but can become large enough to compress surrounding cranial nerves, leading to palsies. Rarely, patients can present in cardiac arrhythmia if the carotid sinus is stimulated by compression from the tumor. Carotid body tumors can be managed conservatively with active monitoring via serial imaging, or require surgical excision in a specialized unit with both ent and vascular input. Radiotherapy may be an option for tumors that are unresectable, to limit tumor growth. 
Classically carotid body tumors can be moved from side to side but not up and down, due to their location in the carotid sheath, termed Fontaine's sign. Third, thyroglossal cyst. It is a congenital fluid-filled sac, commonly presenting in younger patients, and have equal incidence between men and women. Thyroglossal cysts present as a palpable painless midline mass that move up with swallowing and protrusion of the tongue. When infected, they can increase in size and become painful. Standard treatment is surgical intervention, with the modified cystrunk procedure being the most widely used. The central body of the hyoid bone is removed to allow complete removal of the entire thyroglossal tract. There is a high chance of recurrence if the medial portion of the hyoid bone is not removed. It is essential that these patients have an ultrasound scan of the neck to identify the thyroid gland preoperatively, as the only functioning thyroid tissue may be attached to the cyst and risks getting excised during the procedure. In rare cases, patients may develop thyroglossal duct cyst carcinoma that often arises from ectopic thyroid tissue in the cyst, where the most common histology is papillary carcinoma. This picture shows a simple thyroglossal cyst. Lastly, I will talk on bronchial cyst. Bronchial cysts are congenital masses which arise in the lateral aspect of the neck, typically anterior to the sternocleidomastoid. During the fourth week of development, bronchial clefts form ridges known as bronchial arches, involved in the formation of a number of structures in the head and neck. Incomplete obliteration of these clefts will result in the formation of bronchial cysts. They present as palpable masses anterior to SCM, typically unilateral. When infected, they can increase in size and become painful. Larger bronchial cysts can result in dysphagia, dysphonia, and difficulty breathing. Surgical excision is the definitive treatment. Sclerotherapy can be offered as an alternative to surgery in certain cases, involving injection of a sclerosing agent under ultrasound guidance. Care needs to be taken when managing these patients as a common differential diagnosis is a cystic metastasis from a squamous cell carcinoma of the head and neck region. As such, an ultrasound-guided FNA is an important investigation prior to arranging for excision of the mass. This is a picture showing a bronchial cyst. That's all for this video. Thank you.